Hey, good morning, friends. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Chat with Ryan Frank. So glad that you are here. Welcome Facebook. Welcome YouTube. Welcome podcast. Thank you for tuning in today. If you're watching or listening live, glad you're here. Those of you that are watching or listening later, thank you as well. Remember, if there's anything you would like to talk about, send me a text at 833-792-6372. Eight three three seven nine two six three seven two. Yesterday was kind of a big day. I'm gonna be honest because we released a brand new edition of Cool Cats and Karaoke. This has been version one, which was a Disney edition, has been one of our top sellers at Kids Matter. You guys and girls have gone crazy about this, showing this on Zoom um, and sharing it with the kids in your ministry. And it's been so popular that we came out with a worship volume one. Now here, here's the, here's the job, your job. Your job is to guess the name of the worship song that the cat is singing. Are you ready? Let's see how you do. Uh, where's the volume? Okay. It's going to come. It's going to come. Here we go. Here we go. Meow, 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 I am. Meow, 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 meow. 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 Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. What is it? This is amazing grace. Wow. All right. If you've ever heard cats sing worship songs, you've heard it today for the very first time here on the Daily Coffee Chat. This is one of a lot of downloads that you can find at kidsmatter.com. Jenny Whitaker is here with me, and we're going to um, play an interview that I did an hour ago with Michael Jr., which I'm pretty excited about. So Jenny, welcome. Uh, Jenny, come on in here. Jenny is a part of the I Love Kidman Facebook group. Jenny, have you ever heard a cat sing a worship song like that? I have not. Um, I can't wait to use that one, though. We are having a uh, Zoom party, sort of a summer kickoff. So uh, I, it's not one of the ones I downloaded, but it's going to be now. <laughs> nice. So yeah, that'll nice. be fun. When I first was kind of pitched the idea of cats singing songs, I thought, I don't know what I think about that, but you know what? My girls loved it and kids are actually going crazy about this. So I can see why. <laughs> yeah. So Jenny's part of the I Love Kidmen Facebook group and you're a, a Kidmen leader yourself. Tell us about your ministry. Yeah. Hi. Um, so uh, Jenny Whitaker, I am the Children and Family Ministry Director at Bradfordville First Baptist Church in Tallahassee, Florida, um, where it is very hot and muggy today. Um, yes. and so yeah, uh, but kind of like your uh, crazy cat singing idea, uh, I had a kind of crazy idea uh, about a uh, month and a half ago as um, churches and um, some of my colleagues were trying to decide what are we going to do for VBS and even on the I Love Kidman page, we see a lot of conversations yeah. about what are you doing, how are you doing it and that sort of thing. Um, and so one of the things that I'm very passionate about is working together with other Kidman leaders and helping one another, especially right now. And so we, uh, I sort of pitched this idea of what if, you know, locally, what if we did a VBS for our whole city? Um, what would that look like? How would, how could we connect kids in a shared experience during that same week and work together to do it? Um, and so we kind of launched VBS TLH. TLH, TLH is kind of short for Tallahassee. Um, 
And so it started as this small idea. And as you know, sometimes God will do, he makes these small ideas and he grows them. Um, and it has sort of exploded. And so what started out as a citywide VBS has now really grown to all across the country and beyond. We have kids from 12 different states, partner churches from four different states. Uh, we've got neat. just people from all over, even in Canada now participating. So we're really excited about what God's doing with it. Um, it's virtual. So anybody can access it uh, and it's the week of June 15th. So we're super excited about it. Um, but yeah, we're, it's going to be different. So tell us what this practically, first of all, I love it that this, you've got a vision to do something beyond your church in your community. I think that's amazing. And then it's cool to see how God has just taken this and he's grown it and other churches are participating. So what's it look like practically if I'm a church in Indiana, Ohio, Florida, New York State, and I want to participate in this virtual VBS with you the week of June 15th. What's that look like super practically? Yeah, so there's two different sides of that. One is as an attendee, if you're a participating person, um, a kid or a family, basically all you do is you register and you'll join us for a live stream each morning at nine o'clock. And so it's 30 minutes, the same amount of time as a normal children's programming would be. And it's going to be our worship rally. We're going to sing songs, play funny games. We're going to do our Bible content then. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll send you to our, our, um, our website. And on the website will be all of these on-demand videos um, and PDF instruction, instructional sheets that people can either use digitally or print them out to do each of the typical rotation tracks. So you're looking at crafts, snack, music, um, and rec. And all of that'll be available on the website. And even if you can't join us live, that archive video will go up on the website that day too. So if you're say in California nice. and you don't wanna get up at 6 a.m. to join us live, that's okay. You can watch it later. Exactly. Um, and so it's very practical for families of any, you know, capacity. If you're working and your kids are in daycare, that's okay. You can still join us at night. Um, as long, you know, we just want families and kids to have an opportunity to be part of VBS. Now, the other side yeah. of that is our partner churches. Okay. As you know, VBS is, a, a, is not just one week. The goal is to connect people with the church. Um, and so we wanted to have that strategy in place. And so partner churches are coming alongside of us and giving us ways to connect people who are participating with a local church in their area if they don't already have a home church. And so at the end of VBS, what that looks like is us sending out, you know, if you're a partner church in Indiana and we have kids from Indiana, we're going to send you that list and say, you know, here's the kids who are in your zip code in your region and these are the kids that you're going to want to follow up with so yeah those are the two kind of sides of that now this vbs itself is it um like a group publishing vbs is it something y'all are writing what's yeah we're using the lifeway concrete and cranes theme and um, we're really excited about that uh the bible content is really incredible for the season that most families are in right now because it's all about building your life on the solid foundation of christ and so no matter what comes our way, no matter what storms come, we won't be shaken. And I just can't think of a more relevant message to be sharing with kids and families right now. So we're it excited is. about that. Jenny, thanks for doing this. If someone wants to learn more about this, if they want to talk to you more about this, what's a good way for them to find you or connect with you? Absolutely. They can either, um, they can go to vbstlh.com um, or they can find the Facebook group uh, VBS TLH. Uh, so if you go facebook.com slash groups slash VBS TLH, they can find us there. Um, send us a message and I'll be glad to get in touch with you and let you know more about it if you want to join us. That's awesome. We'll put those links in the comments. I love it. You even got a T to man. Yeah, we got a t-shirt. And you know, again, we started with this small vision, one savior, one city, one week. Uh, it's like one savior, one everywhere, one week, but that's okay. This, it works. We're really excited. So yeah, I'm kind of, my feelings are hurt. You didn't send me one. I would have wore one today. Sorry, What's we it? just got them on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so, all good. Yeah. Jenny, thanks for um, pursuing this vision for your church and for your community. And now it's neat to see how God is, is. taking it even beyond your community and state and thanks for sharing it with you i love kid ministry. Thanks for being such, yeah, yeah thanks for being such an active part of this community keep up the great work thanks so much thanks for having me all right thanks jenny bye okay. i love that thank you jenny whitaker um if you're looking still trying to figure out hey what should we do this summer maybe you're a small church trying to think of a solution or maybe you're a mid-sized or a large church and you want to have another option for families connect with jenny uh we'll put the links um to the website and the Facebook group in the comments. Earlier today, I recorded an interview with Michael Jr. I actually recorded 
an interview with Michael Jr. several days ago that we were going to broadcast on Tuesday and we had problems with the file. Um, so we reshot the interview this morning, just about an hour ago, and we're going to share that with you right now. Michael Jr. is a comedian. Um, he's been on several movies and he has an upcoming film uh, titled Selfie Dad, which is heading your way here in about two weeks. I'll talk about it more in the interview. Um, I'm super thankful for the opportunity to connect with Michael on Zoom, and I hope that you enjoy this conversation. It lasts about 14 minutes and 17 seconds is exactly how long it lasts. So enjoy the interview. I'll come back when it's done. Hey friends, Ryan Frank, welcome Michael Jr. to the coffee chat. This is take two. Michael and I were getting to be such good friends. We just are doing this every couple of days, I guess. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, Michael and I did this interview a few days ago and we had problems with the file. So we are back again. Michael, thanks for speaking to all these kids, pastors, to the children's Absolutely. community. Uh, Michael has a new movie releasing soon, which we'll talk about momentarily called Selfie Dad. He's also a comedian with a growing platform. God is really blessing and growing your platform. Michael, how's this pandemic affecting your life work and your family and everything uh, else in your world these days? Um, I, I'm not really tripping off of it anymore. I mean, I'm not doing a lot of traveling, but I get to hang out with my family, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's not bad. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. All right, well, tell, will you take a minute and tell us about Selfie Dad? Yeah, so it's a movie about... Um, and let me just say, because this we're, we're posting it. This is posted today, correct? That's right, in like an hour. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the the um, the uh, the movie is cool. It's called Selfie Dad. It's a, um, it's about a dad who has a great sense of humor, but he's he right now at the t he's just like an editor. He's an editor for a reality TV show. Yep. He doesn't like his job. And it's just a really miserable position for him. I mean, he loves his family, but he's just miserable at work and it's just not great. So he starts the YouTube page and it kind of blows up and he starts to gain everything that he wants, mm. but he's losing what he really needs, mm. which is to be the dad that he's supposed to be, the father he's supposed to be. So some of the things that I really like about this, this movie in particular is, uh, is the fact that I get to, um, I got to do improv. I got to like a lot of the scenes, a lot of the stuff we came up That's with. Cool. We, we, uh, it was already written. It was in a script, but then the directors knowing about what my strengths are as far as making up things on the spot. I was able to make up some stuff on the spot and an interesting thing that happened that kind of ties in what's going on right now in the world. Um, there's a scene, the director, great guy, Brad Silverman, awesome guy. Mm -hmm. There's a scene where he, um, where my character gets pulled over by the police. And uh, he had it written out where I get out the car. My character gets out the car when he gets pulled over by the police. And I had to explain to him that that's just not something that we do as black people. You don't just get out of the car. And then his next thing was, well, you should be, at least when the police walks up, you're angry. And I explained to him again, mm -hmm. it's not normal. It wouldn't be realistic for me to jump out of the car or to be angry. So. Yeah, it was good on the set. We were able to have that conversation That's cool. about the differences of what we how we have to respond when we get pulled over by the police. And even now, what's going on, got to be real with you. I'm not sure what I would do currently if I got pulled over. I mean, chances are I probably wouldn't even stop. I would have to just keep honestly keep going. Yeah. Up. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's kind of what we're dealing with now. So the movie, yeah, the yeah. fact that it talks about going through some hard times and how the Bible can help you through this, I yeah. think it's still very timely, especially with the virus and then even with the um, with the virus in the form of uh, what's going on in yeah. the, uh, in the, with the police right now. So um, in the movie, you play Ben Marcus, this dad yeah. who, like you said, he, he gets this kind of, I don't know if you call it overnight, but he's all of a sudden now this his career is taking off, and he loses. Yeah, it's tough to lose up. Yeah, on what matters most, and I think for pa I think for any of us, this is a real temptation, and I think a lot of pastors deal with this, um, where your ministry can become more important than your family. 
Talk to us about that. Mm-hmm. How do we overcome that? Like, as you made this movie, I'm sure you were personally reminded with your family, like, gosh, I don't want my career to trump my, my, my family. My number one ministry are my kids, my family. Can we talk to us about that? Yeah. So, well, I guess a good example is I always try to, I mean, it's one thing. I mean, any of the pastors who are probably watching right now, all of you would say that my family comes before my ministry but what are you actually doing to make sure that's the case? So for example, even before this interview, my daughter was showing me some cool schoolwork she did. Yep. And she had probably 30 slides to show me and we got to number 15. And then I realized I had to come to this interview. So I literally asked her, hey, can we pick this up afterwards? Would you like to pick this down? And I was gonna be cool sitting there the whole time watching it now and then, I mean, Sorry, then you was just going to be waiting around no, um, cool. and just spend that time with her as a way to continuously remind myself what's most important. So I would suggest that you have some sort of checkpoints that are actually um, actions of you displaying how your family is actually more important. And when I talk about checkpoints, one of the things that's really cool is if you're a uh, any sort of minister, but a, a kid's minister as well, you want to create a... Um, like a, a finish line somewhere between your work, your physical job where you go, and then when you get home. What I mean by a finish line, maybe there's a maybe there's a McDonald's, or maybe there's a Starbucks, maybe there's something. But yeah. when you pass that up, you shed as much of all the work stuff as you can. Like you make it a point, even if you have to stop your car and say, hey, this is Okay, and take a couple deep breaths and be like, I'm going to let all of that go Man, that's so good. I can be home and be dad and mom or mom or whatever that is. So I think it's important that you get to f- do something physical and then watch what God will do in the spiritual as well. you got to do your part. You can't just say it. you got to display it. Man, that's good. Um, I've never thought about that, Michael Jr. You. you know, I've, I've talked a lot about that. Like when you're at home, when you're there, you actually need to be there. But I like that idea of finding – this, a stop sign or a mailbox or McDonald's, like when I pass it, that's a visual cue to me that right. I'm going to shut off and I'm going to focus on my spouse, Absolutely. my kids. Literally give yourself permission to let it go. Because if you don't give yourself permission, because the ministry is like, it, it doesn't end. So if you don't give yourself permission to release it and to let it go, yeah. then it'll just stay on there. Even saying it, even doing an act, it could be right before you push the garage door to open. Yeah. And then when it closes, all of that stuff, as much as possible is gone. Michael Jr., let me ask you a question. Because I think one you of can our... Ask me a question. Yeah, here, here it is. Get ready. Go ahead. I'm ready. I, I know for me, one of the biggest things I struggle with when I'm at home is this... It's audio. Thing. Getting the audio right. When Getting the audio right on okay. these interviews. Yes. Yeah. It's our phone. Our phones are such distractions. Like, have you found any way, like, what do you do? How do you, how do you avoid constantly when this thing gives you a notification or whatever? I mean, do you literally sometimes just set your phone to the side? I I literally do. But another thing I do, and I don't have it in front of me right now, is I have a, I I have a iPhone, which is pretty cool. It's the, the, the whatever, mint green and got all the bells and whistles and stuff, which is cool. But I also got a flip phone. I have a flip phone that has uh, the three people have the phone number. Actually, my kids, which is five, yeah. and then my wife, and then uh, my parents have that number. So when I want to just completely disconnect, this phone just goes away because there's so much stuff on here anyway. But the flip phone is the move. Flip phone, nobody has the number except for the people who really need me, and you can't do nothing with the flip phone. Like you just yeah, you don't, you you don't have your Facebook on there. there. Yeah, it's miserable. And so I just literally created a just got a completely different device just for that vice. So yeah, it's one thing that I find myself setting down the phone and then a, a, the iPhone and then I'll pick it back up, set it down, pick it back up. I'm like, wait a minute, I, I got to be more conscious of this. Let me just get another phone and completely disconnect. I left my phone one day and mm-hmm. got on an airplane. And at first I was a little anxious, like snap, what I'm gonna do? My wife was with me. And then about Two hours in, I just felt this really that awesome. It just felt really, really good. So and you know, if, if somebody really needs to get hold of you, they'll figure out how to get a hold of you, won't they? Absolutely. Like they'll, they'll figure it out. Like follow the funny. I'm somewhere around here, but yeah, my my, my family knows how to get a hold. Plus, I'm at home. Like ninety-seven percent of the time, I'm at home. Good especially now, this is a great time not to have your phone. 
Because yeah. you've got to be home anyway. There's a virus leaking around. Yeah. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yeah. Boy, that's good. Um, thanks for sharing that. Michael, a couple last questions as we wrap up. So, Selfie yeah. Dad. Selfie um, Dad, the movie. I'm so pumped about this movie. I can't even tell you. It comes out. We were going to put it in theaters. And that's all over changed, the country. right? Yeah. June 15th. That has changed. And yeah. because of what's going on, we've decided instead of putting it in theaters, we're going to go ahead and drop this thing uh, on video on demand on June 19th. So you get to see a theatrical level movie be released in your house. Like we're literally going to release it in your house. So you get to see it. I love so it. awesome. You can go to michaeljr.com slash um, movie and find out more about it. Or better yet, go to selfiedad.com. Okay. Uh, or so, selfiedadmovie.com. And I'm sure you'll do all the links and stuff. We will. Do the so practically, what's that look like? I'm going to watch it at home. Do I? Yeah. So practically, you need, well, you're going to need a TV. You got a TV? I do. I do. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. You got internet? You got internet? You're going to need internet. Got, got internet. Cable. Yeah. You look like a cable dude. You got cable? I do. I got cable. Yeah, yeah. You look yeah. like a cable dude. I do I really? Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, <laughs> then what you going to do? Guys, those guys that wear navy v-necks. And yeah, like, well, you know, I think it's a little more than that. I'm not okay, all right. Something more. It's, you just, yeah, anyway, so I'm, <laughs> that's hilarious. So then you just go either, if you got one of the remotes, I won't get too fancy for you, but if you got one of the remotes where you can talk, you just push the button and say selfie dad, and it's going to show up. Or you go to iTunes, or you go to uh, Amazon Prime, or you go to Roco, or you, my boy Pookie got some bootlegs. Nice, nice. Okay, tell them about them right here. You know how to get in touch with me. Hit me on my flip phone. Let me tell you how to get it. I love it. So, um, and you just go to any of those platforms, okay. and it's like twenty dollars, and you get the twenty bucks as opposed to you got to get put gas in the car, you got to go to the movie, you got to take the kids, you got to buy the popcorn for ninety seven dollars. Instead, yeah. you get to sit at home and boom, watch a theatrical level movie. And the movie has some ingredients that you never, you rarely ever see in a film. It has the ingredients of the Bible. There's family, and then there's funny. Like, those are three of the ingredients that are in it that are rarely in a film, and uh, I'm really excited about how people are going to respond to it. And it really is a film for all ages. I mean, kids are going to like this. Um, parents are going to like it. Michael Jr., we've got a lot of children's pastors um, yeah. watching this right think, now or listening. I think you guys are awesome, children's pastors. Would you just, just say, give them an, a awesome. word of encouragement from your perspective? Remind them that, you know, these guys – Ladies and gentlemen, they work hard. They're often under resourced, underappreciated. No, tell me what to say to them. You're gonna tell me what to say. Yeah. yeah. Just, you, tell them how awesome. Tell them how awesome they are. Yeah. 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 Cool. I'll throw you in there too, Ryan. You're Thank pretty you. awesome. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, I think what happens a lot of times, especially with children's pastors, is people drop their kids off, and yeah. they don't even recognize that there's some actual human beings in there taking care of their kids. I mean, we know it instinctively, but we're looking at them on, a, on some level. We look at them as if they're a tool that's needed as opposed to a person that's serving. That's a good so, point. So um, I want you to know, I see you. I appreciate you. And even those who don't articulate it enough, they really do appreciate you because you're like literally like you're pouring into our children. We're trusting you with our children. And I'm just grateful that you absolutely are trustworthy. And nobody ever really gets a, nobody ever really says thank you enough to you guys. Like, like I'll say it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of my kids. And it's not, it sounds like if you just join it right now and I'm talking to all of these uh, children's pastors, you probably think I got kids all over the country. That's not true. I check. We don't, that's not what I'm saying. You really don't. All right. I, I really, I really don't. Do that. Anyway, so, I really appreciate you guys, like for real, like you're dealing with all, so you got, you changing, like you got a, a lot of stuff going on. Like there's a grip going on. Sometimes I peek my head under there where they had a little half door. Yeah. So you got to reach under there and grab the kids and make sure they don't hit the head. And there's a couple of them, you want them to hit the head. Just you do, because the nap might be long. It would be great. I know you want to, but you don't because you're awesome. And I appreciate you. So. Well, thank you. It's Michael Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, check out SelfieDad.com. Follow Michael Jr. If you're not movie.com. Yeah, the movie. Yeah. It's called yeah. selfiedadmovie.com. Check Thank it out. Thank you. Thank you. movie.com. Connect with Michael Jr. on Instagram, on YouTube, on social media. God's really given him a great platform, and um, it's cool to see how God's blessing you. Michael, thanks for your time. Thanks for pouring into the Kidman community. We're praying the best 
for no, helping awesome. that movie. You're awesome, Ryan. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael Jr. Um, from a pre-recorded interview about an hour and a half ago. Go check out SelfieDadMovie.com. This is a, a film that is coming to your home, and I want you to know about it as a Kidman community, and then I want us to all really get behind this. Share this link to SelfieDadMovie.com with all of the families in your church. This is a going to be a great, great opportunity for families to gather around and to laugh, to be reminded of the importance of family. And um, I'm super pumped to be a partner on this project. It's, um, it's SelfieDadMovie.com. Thank you, Michael Jr. Big shout out to my friend David Almgren, who's part of the I Love Kidman community for helping make this interview possible. Thank you, David. Uh, friends, we're going to wrap up our coffee chat a little early today because I have a commitment here in five minutes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. I remember if we can serve you anyway, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for our next coffee chat. Be blessed.